uh, so I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of LG here in Australia. Um, we have about three and a half thousand products across 17 categories. So LG has a lot of products that you don't even know that we sell. Things like solar panels, commercial displays, as well as the things you know well, which are fridges and washing machines and TVs and so forth. So you'll notice out in the garden there, there is a big sign that says InnoFest. And as we walk around the house today, you're gonna to go, wow, did the LG really put all this on just for us? Well, I'd love to say that um, we did. And by the way, welcome to my house, or at least it's mine for the next three days. Um, and Innerfest is, a, is an event that we run every year for uh, retailers. So uh, Sydney was picked for the um, Asian buyers meeting. So uh, all the buyers from the retailers in Asia have travelled to Sydney and there's been meetings happening here for the last day and a half. So they come here, they see the products and then they sit down and decide what products they're gonna stock in their stores. And uh, we can see the beautiful, uh, the beautiful view. view. Yes. So this, in Australia, we do things a little differently. We don't participate in this event normally. And we take our retailers like Harvey Norman, Good Guys, off to Korea every October where they see the product in the factories and then we make a decision as to what we're actually, they make a decision as to what they're gonna stock. So as we walk around today, you're gonna to see all sorts of things. So for example, here's one of our latest, latest products. This is available here in Australia, and this is what we call a spin mop. And if I turn that, you can see the little spinning things on the, on the and this is actually a, a stick back that vacuums and mops your floor at the same time. So we can see here, let's extend that out. You can essentially do two things at once. So that's the sort of innovation. Now we're selling this product here in Australia. You put, this is a water tank, you put water in here, it drips onto these cloths which can put in the washing machine after you've used it. And it's a, a, a simpler way to, um, to clean your house. Do you know what the RIP for that will be in Australia? Uh, yeah, it's selling um, at just over $1,000. Yeah. So it's that comes with everything, comes with a, a soft floor tool, hard floor tool, comes with that spin mop, um, plus some other attachments as well. So, um, and whilst we're talking about that product, uh, we've been talking about LG, and LG, what do you think of? You think of life's good. It really summarises our products really well, which is how do we make Australians' lives easier? How do we enhance their entertainment? How do we make their chores simpler? And that's a good example of a product where we take a stick vacuum. Um, in this case, we're obviously taking one of our competitors removable battery, second battery in the, in the uh, stand there. Um, James, you're a little bit taller than I am, so you're gonna to wanna to extend that a bit longer. I'm gonna make that a bit shorter. Um, I've already talked about the, the spin mop in the end there. Um, all the and what sort of battery life are you talking them. about? Uh, so you're talking, uh, depending on what attachment you've got on the end, up to 40 minutes per battery. Okay. So these products are actually taking over from barrel vacuums mm. in Australia. Not that we hear the talk about um, home appliances, but you will see a whole bunch of home appliances as we walk through uh, the house this afternoon. But as you know, we're going to be talking about televisions, and um, and if we think about televisions, we've got uh, we talk about a thing called bigger, better, smarter. So Australians want bigger TVs, they want a better quality TV, and they want their TV to be smarter. And that's going to be a bit, a bit of the theme that we're going to go through today. But the reality is, is what are people doing on those TVs? So the three big things people are do, doing on those TVs is entertainment, so movies, for example, is sport, people are enjoying their sport, and the last one is gaming. So today, we also, we're gonna talk about how our various products enhance that experience and makes, make, that, make that better for people. We're gonna be talking about some of the other technologies around 4K, um, we're gonna talk about you know, what's going on around some 5G technology and that sort of stuff. So there's a bunch of newer technology, we're gonna talk about 8K as well. So there's a bunch of newer technology which we cover, we're gonna see 8K TV. So we're gonna do a bit of modular day, we're gonna to go to various rooms and talk about different technologies. Um, and uh, all, all the same, we're reverting back and talking about how that goes with passion points. We're very pleased that uh, for the third year in a row, Choice has ranked us the, the best TV um, supplier in Australia. So that's based on a review of our entire range of products. And they're saying that LG, as a whole, you make better TVs than anyone else. So we've been awarded that three years based on them physically testing our products. 
the um, the other part, I guess the last part of this is it's very important for us to have the right partners. Now you guys, I see you guys as partners of us because you help us communicate and get the, the news out there, but partners are also about associating ourselves with the right companies. So today we're going to be talking about Google, we're going to be talking about Meridian, and we're going to be talking about Dolby. So how do those guys help us provide a better product? We, we're not arrogant enough to go out there and say that we can do these things ourselves. Instead, we, we want, want to partner with the people that are really experts in, in the area. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go for a walk and we're going to start off in audio and then we're going to work our way through the various TV models. Uh, I did show a couple of you before. That's our new homebrew machine. So some of you have seen that particular product before. Um, but that's the pod-based homebrew machine. Audio products, I'm really going to spend our time here on the sound bars, um, but we do have our full range of audio products here. Some of these products are available in Australia, and once again, it comes down to the individual retailers and they reviewing these products and making a decision as to whether they would stock these. So for example, these are our Bluetooth um, wireless speakers. These are available in the good guys in Australia. Are you pretty good at sort of predicting what they are and aren't going to stock? Are there some things you go, you know, seriously, why aren't you stocking this? Yeah, look, there are. So, for example, there's a there's a product that we'll see today as we walk past it called a styler. It was in that other room. It looks like a big closet that you put your shirts in or your suit in. Well, this is the press. The pr it doesn't yeah. press. It f physically steams and shakes the wrinkles out of your clothes. Everyone says, "I want to buy one of those," mm. and they say, and I ask me how much it is. Oh, well, I'd pay that, but the retailers don't want to don't want to buy it. So. David is, he would be our first customer of one of those in Australia. So desperate. Okay, so we're going to come across here to the sound bars. Could you find Thomas for me? Yes. Um, so, this year's um, range of sound bars. So, I talked to, uh, earlier about the importance of partners. So, Meridian is um, our partner when it comes to sound. Now, this is the second year that Meridian has been on board with us. And what that means is we've been able to deepen that relationship with them. So the first thing that's happening there is we are working with them on components. So they advise us what components we should buy. They're also build, uh, helping us with the software in the background and the tuning of those products. They're also doing a thing called upmixing. Now, I'm going to do this, the dumbed down version of what upmixing is. And very simply, if you stand in front of these speakers here, Ideally, I want my ears directly in front of those high-pitched tweeters, and I'm going to get the best experience. If I move off to one side, that audio experience is going to deteriorate. Similar with a sound bar, if you're traditionally sitting at that sweet spot, you're going to get that perfect effect. So what this upmixing is all about is actually mixing the channels so you're increasing the size of that sweet spot. So it's not one person sitting on the lounge, it's everybody sitting directly in, on the lounge in front of, the, in front of the, the equipment. The other thing you'll see is the Google Assist logo on the products. So Google Assist is now being integrated into the sound bus. So why would you integrate Google Assist in the sound bus? Where's the number one place that people um, use Google Assist in the house? Living it's room. the living room. Living room's number, number one, the um, kitchen's number two, and bedroom's number three. So to actually integrate um, Google Assist into the sound bar actually makes sense. However, Google Assist does not work on the soundbar when the TV is operational, for obvious reasons. So the, some of the other things that we've done this year... So um, that again, and why? So why? Yeah. So you can, imagine, you can imagine playing back your TV and, and the Google Assist talking over the top of the television. So you don't want... You, if you want to use Google Assist, you would press the button on your remote control for your TV to use Google Assist okay. rather, rather, than, rather than using your voice. So you want Google Assist to only work when you've dedicated push the button. So the, to... the push button is, are you going to get the same amount out of the soundbar as you are inside the TV in terms of performance from Google Voice? Uh, okay, so really good question. So the, at the moment, the answer is it's identical. Yeah. At the beginning of last year, the, the, the contextual speech with a Google Assistant dedicated device was better than the contextual speech than from a TV. Definitely. Now the contextual speech with the TV is the same as the soundbar. Contextual speech is it knows the questions you asked before and therefore, you know, um, 
when's Tom's crew's birthday, what movies are he in? You don't have to keep saying, OK, Google. Exactly. Yeah, and also, but it knows what you asked before. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, it's, it's, it should be the two. Yeah. Because yeah. in the past, you had to keep saying, OK, Google. Yeah. But also, if you don't have it uh, activated when the TV is on, if someone on the TV show says, OK, Google, it's not going to activate it either. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I talked about Meridian a moment ago. We're going to have that in three models, and also, the, when it's a Meridian, it's got the Dolby Atmos in it. We're going to have the 8, the 9, and this is the 10 here. This is not the 9, it says it's the 9, but it's actually the 10. We're going to see the 9 later on. We've got big expectations of this particular product here. So this is going to be a sub $1,000 Dolby Atmos soundbar. Um, the, all of the top, all the models from the 7 up have a centre channel now. So we didn't have centre channels in as many models before. So we only had it in two. So now it's going to be from the 7 up. So we've doubled the number of soundbars that you have a dedicated centre channel in there. But look, the proof is in the pudding. So what we're going to do, is this working, Thomas? Yeah. yeah. What I want to do, is I'm just going to quickly. What have they done to have a better audio, voice audio, where there's mixing of tracks with a mixture of background music? On the TV or yeah, the soundbar? on the TV. Uh, no, yeah, but, 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 but the soundbar is feeding off the TV. Yeah, can we come back to that one yeah. a little bit later okay. on? Did you hear the difference yeah. between the two? It wasn't a great deal, was it? What's the, so what was the 10? It's about a $500 price difference between the two. So this is the entry level, there's a yeah. middle one which we're going to hear upstairs, yeah. and this is the top. And the top one just had more bass, right? Well, well not just more bass. 50 more watts, no, 150 more watts, uh, it's got more speakers. So this is a 3.2.1? Sorry, 3.1.2, and that's a 5. Because that's not that's not the, this is the ten, not the, not the nine. So that the the entry level one with with uh, Dolby Atmos yeah. was sub one thousand. What's what's that price point in comparison to other sort of Dolby? Atmos? Well, so so this guy. So you'll get all the all the pricing emails. But in terms of tonight. competitive products, how, uh, how so you're looking at 1, here. You're looking. For a decent Dolby Atmos soundbar, they're probably staying about twelve hundred bucks. Right. One more. So, um, you know, the, for five hundred bucks, there's a lot of people that are going to go. You know, that's that's pretty amazing. And when we get upstairs, you really will get a feel for for the differences there. So, with that, we're going to move just a couple of meters into this room. Mm. So, what you can see around the room, and what we're essentially starting at what, what real people are buying as far as TVs. So in this room, um, we have our range of, of UHD and Super UHD TVs. So with the exception of the TV on the end, which is an OLED, the, all the other TVs are LED TVs in here. So uh, we have uh, Super UHD, which we're going to have a look at in a moment over here. So anything that says nanocell is what um, in other countries they're calling, um, they're calling nanocell, we're calling Super UHD here in Australia. Why the difference? Why? Okay, so there's a, the difference is, is um, actually a legal issue around what you can call a television in Australia and what you can't call a television in Australia. So because it's not a... An OLED TV is a different technology. A nano TV is just an LED TV which you're calling something different. And, and therefore, there's legal implications of what you can a television. And if you call it Super UHD, you get around that, I suppose. Yes. And it's, yeah. <laughs> um, so, the, the TV range this year will go from a 43 inch all the way up in the LED, all the way up to an 86 inch. So, I talked earlier about the, the, the passion points that Australian consumers have. Yeah, you can imagine putting this television in your lounge room to watch sport. It's 
pretty good. And these these um, nano sorry nano cell they are nano cell but the super UHD TVs have what we call two um, true motion two hundred. So essentially, what that means is technology in the TVs to remove or reduce the amount of blur that you're going to see as a someone runs and does a hundred meter try down the sideline. Um, of course, you don't get that those issues with an OLED, but you know for the same money you're paying for that, you can put one of those in an Australian household. And what is the most? What do you foresee to be the most popular size for in Australian households? Oh, so, so the average used to be fifty five. When the average is now sixty five. So so remember, I talked about going up. Yeah, bigger, better. We still have a lot of, a lot of seventy five inch TVs. So, and like Tony Brown. Tony's the marketing manager for um, for TVs in Australia. So. And did I introduce Thomas, didn't I? You did, you did. I've done this, this so many times, I can't remember what I have and I haven't done. <laughs> but it um, only makes sense that, the, I mean, 65, I bought my mother at 65, which two or three years ago. So yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as Amy said, standard yeah, yeah. average has gone from 55 yeah. to 65, yeah. but we're seeing an incredible amount of 75 inch TVs I'm, being sold, and, and bigger, and bigger. I'm well. a 75, I've had for about 18 months, and my wife still thinks it's upsetting. <laughs> If you work in TV, you need to have a TV like that. You, you need to be able to see your face in four times the size of what it really is. Okay, so the other thing you notice as you look around the room is this essentially what the TV is going to look like. So if we just turn them all off for a moment, you think about how thick is the bezel, what's the stand look like, and that's, so that's essentially the, the new look um, that we'll see. So, Continually trying to improve how these things are going to look in people's lounge room. We've had a lot of success in our home appliance business over the last few years, purely based on how the products look, because it is important. I and mean, James, you were just saying about you know what your wife thinks of that TV. It's one of the reasons why people love the rollable because it rolls it's away. Right. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we want to give you a quick demonstration of just how far this LED Super UHD TV has come. So the television here on my left is um, a full array Demi Pro television. So that's this is as good as LED can get. We would compare this to our uh, competitors, say uh, a quantum television, uh, not quantum, um, a QLED, a QLED, a QLED television set. So this is this is the equivalent of that. So what we're going to do is look at the difference between an OLED and the LED. So you basically want to be standing around here to sort of see the difference. Thomas? Yep, okay, perfect. So, um, just as we know, nano cell, can anyone remember what nano cell actually did to improve the picture? Made the cells really small. No. Like nano. No? Okay, so I it's remember. a film that we apply to the LCD panel <coughs> that tunes the colours to the correct primary frequencies. You've got purer primaries, you can generate the rest of the colours more accurately. So the nano cell film over here gets colours that rival an OLED, as you can see here. The nano cell film also reduces the ambient light reflections by absorbing as much as possible and diffusing the the, the definition of that reflection. So you can watch it in less, a brighter room. Yes, yes, you can. So it diffuses those reflections so it's less strain on your eyes. And of course, gives you a deeper black as well. And that's what you can see. We just want to show that. Today. It does actually, it's, like, it's washing out over there. On that's the... what you're still getting if you do get an OLED. Yeah. Um, see, with any other video, backlit TV, it gets to a point where it's so near black that if you did turn on the backlight, it would take away the integrity of what it should be. So yeah. the LED will just, ah, just can't show it, it'll turn it off. Fade to black. But if you took it to cinema mode, it would be there, but it wouldn't be as bright. No, no, it should be. We, I'll get Tony to check it again. The other really important thing to understand about our TV technology in the LED, because it does not, it's not affected our OLED, is our viewing angle. So we use these IPS screens, and what that means is you'll get the same colour straight onto the TV as you will up to a 60 degree angle. Whereas our competitors, the more you move away from that 90 degree directly perpendicular angle, you will get a fade of the colours. Mm. So the reality is, is I know in my house I don't get to sit straight in front of the television. My wife has strategically positioned the furniture to be not in front of the television. And that's how most people do watch their TV. So you do want a TV that 
you still get the same colours whether you're sitting it directly in front of it or off slightly off to one side. And you would have you would have imagined with IPS being you know a couple of decades older or a decade older that would have been sorted a long time ago, but obviously not. Not not by our competitors, no. Mm. Now that doesn't affect OLED, so you have the you have this, the wide viewing angles as well without losing that, that colour. Mm. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move away from looking at essentially bigger and a part of the story about better, and we're gonna go and talk about smarter now. So we're gonna actually go up two flights of stairs. So we're going up two restaurants. Um, that's your top end. Mm -hmm. and so that's only got the A7 chip. Correct. Gen 2. Yeah, but what? Which why would we put the A9 at the top end of the nano cell? Because we're using the A9 for the OLED technology. Just for OLED. Yeah, yeah. 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 which will, it doesn't need it basically. But that, okay, that, that, that's, that's probably right. I, I just want to make sure it's clear on. Uh, I'd again. like you to think for a moment what is watched in a TV in your homes now. I can tell you in my house, my son watches YouTube, my daughter watches Netflix, I watch free to wear. So the reality is, is how Australians are consuming television has changed. So one of the most important things around that is how do we make sure that all that is very accessible and easy to use for consumers. So most of you would be familiar with the Magic Remote, where I can wave the remote around the mouse on the screen. You'd be familiar with the WebOS, where we have a nice little ribbon along the bottom here. So one of the new things that we now have as a little improvement, if I was to hold my mouse over YouTube there, you'll see that another ribbon appears above it. So here we're seeing um, the Trend. trending items on YouTube. I can do that over, let's go back down here again, uh, I don't know, um, where's the Tel Telstra one? Yeah, it's Telstra, Telstra TV box office. Mm -hmm. We can do that, we can go to Stan, and, and so forth. If I was to do that over um, Netflix, it brings it brings up the shows that I was watching yesterday. It brings up um, what I might be interested. So quite clever. Now, any of you have a YouTube channel? Yes. Alex on Tech. Well, it's just it's it's one word. Well, it's we'll see if it comes up. Yeah. It's about 30 seconds to search. Don't be alarmed. So I'm just going to think about that for a moment. Um, can I bring the ribbon back up while that's doing that, or will that stop it? You can. Okay, so while that's... I think that's just stopped it. No, no, it's still going. It's still going? Okay. Yeah, it's still going. So one of the other neat things... Well, can I press on that? That's going to mess sure. it up, mate. Yeah. So one of the things we want to, to do is click on this and then we could delete that, we could move that. So for example, I can click on that and I can move it to there and so forth. I'm actually adding a YouTube channel at the moment. I'm going to put Alex down here as one of the YouTube channels that I want to watch. Also, we can manually move these tiles around, but we can also do intelligent edit, which means it will actually move the tiles based on what we're actually using on the television. So, how do I just click up that again? And again? Yeah, I believe it's should... oh, Yeah, it's the very first one. Okay, right, so, here we go. Oh. Oh. No, no. You probably added it to the I home. Think you just added it. And okay. just yeah. Have a look, it should appear at the very end now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, here is. Well, there's two YouTubes there, so there's, there's a second one there. And just try this one at the front. No. Yeah, it looks like you had a dude perfect. Oh, that's. Oh, sorry. I think it was there. We just bumped. You may have. Go. You may have. The TV's great. It's just the operators. That's right. It's the operator. Yeah. <laughs> to do it without do it without um, spaces. Let's touch that. Uh, oh, that's not you need point. previous searches. Yeah. <laughs> well, once you put it in, in theory, we, wouldn't, we won't be doing it. Oh, well, you, didn't, you didn't need this, this, but, the spaces. But what we're going to see in a minute. So my son, who has his favourite YouTube channels, we can actually now just make that a tile on the bottom that he can yeah. just click on. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so whilst that's, that's doing that, um, one of the things I want to talk about is 
the ability to share photos from this onto that. So we've been able to do that for years, right? Mm. But only on an Android-based phone. So this year we will be able to do Apple AirPlay 2. So we'll be able to share photos and videos off your Apple phone straight onto the screen. So for example, if you were watching a video on your phone that had Dolby Vision, you could stream that off your phone, off your Apple phone onto the television and the television would do the Dolby Vision. So that will be a software upgrade later on this year. It was definitely there. It did to me. It's definitely yeah, good. It's just saw it there. It's it just saw my face. I the software and boy walk in. So. <laughs> but it was I there. It was, it was the right one. It was me. I didn't click. I did it too. Yeah. Did you? Oh, you just did it as What's well. What's the chance? Okay. Two professionals. Um, I think now <laughs> the other thing we're going to show you in a moment. There it is. Click add to home. There we go. Hey. There oh, we go. Did we really want to do that? There we Look go. That. <laughs> That's it. Look at that. <laughs> now click on him. Let's see if we get anything that we don't want to see on there. No, it's tech only channel. There's no. Okay, you had Eros now. I mean, what sort of channel is that? Doesn't want to go there. <laughs> this is good. It, it's it's demos. It's it's, it's demo. Um, yeah, he was literally updating it earlier. So. Is it the... There you go. Oh, he's up just there. Well, you've got you've opened up regular YouTube. You just, you're sort of you're, you're trying to see whether or not if you click on that if it's going to bring it up now. Anyway. Do you have content? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hundreds and thousands of videos. Hundreds and hundreds of videos. Yeah. Well, I can show you. What this video will go to the sunrise this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to watch it tomorrow morning on sunrise? You'll see it tomorrow. Now, just show us the home, um, home dashboard. Okay, over here, we see a couple, we've got a search, home dashboard, and live TV. So awesome. this is the home dashboard. So we talked a moment downstairs about connected home. There we go, Alex on TV. <gasps> It was updating. There you Alex go. There you go. There, yeah, you want to see the dealing router? There's the shop back people. There you go. Lots of things. All right. So let's go back to the home dashboard. Uh, yeah. Okay. So um, here we've got the dashboard. We haven't been going on the television. How we're controlling the TV? What's plugged into it? This year, if I plug an Xbox in there, it'll automatically recognise it's an Xbox. We don't need to tell it. So. You've got the right live TV channel there. Okay. Yes, your money. Yeah, we'll go back to that in a moment. And here, in this section here, um, we will be supporting all the LG and Google products here. So this could be a light bulb, could be a camera, it could be a washing machine, it could be a fridge, it could be a vacuum cleaner. So you'll be able to access all your smart home devices from your TV screen. So, for example, washing machine will tell you how many minutes. You can see your front door from here and so forth. So. That whole connected home. I integration. think that's important to call out too. If, as long as any other brand is in the open connectivity forum, I was just trying to remember the name of the OCF, you'll see it up there on the dashboard. So all the so other Philips Hue, all those sorts yep. of. Yep. So for yeah. example, if, if you're you certified, yes. yeah. th then you'll yep. be able to see it on this system. Change the lamp to red. There is a search function. Oh, that always happens every time the first one. Change the lamp to red. Um, I know this. You can search the OCF website for everything, and it's every different SKU that's registered, and then it'll so if you have a red, that's not a, that's not an LG product. That's a Philips Philips Hue. Yeah. But okay. they'll, they'll come up on the dashboard. Yeah. So you just run the U controller into that. Yes. Well, the purpose is not everyone is like familiar with talking. So by having them here with the magic remote, you can see on oh, my refrigerator is. This degree, I can change it. Click, dot, dot. I can start my washer or finish it now. You can do point click, which is more comfortable for some people as they get more familiar okay. with it. It gives you a visual dashboard of your connected home. Yeah, I mean, right. that's, the, right. that's the simple that thing. That is right, yeah. Which is cool. That's bigger than this thing. Bigger than your phone, yeah. Bigger than this. Uh, so the last part of the equation is, so last year we, we showed off all the Google functionality. So I mentioned downstairs about the, the contextual is caught up now. Um, we now have added Alexa. So the Amazon button on the remote, or sorry, we will be adding Alexa. So the reason this TV is misbehaving is it's running beta software, so we can show you Alexa. The TVs downstairs that are not connected to the internet would, would be behaving a lot better than this, this particular one. But um, this is the beta of the software that will include Alexa, which we'll be releasing once it's fully stable later on in the year. And for example, we could. Amazon uh, has 
ownership of Audible, which is the reading books online. So I'm going to hold down Alexa, it'll take five seconds. Read The Great Gatsby. Okay, sorry, patience, please. Read The Great Gatsby. Read, ah, read Great Gatsby. Getting your selection from Audible, resuming The Great Gatsby. Yeah, and presuming you have this book already purchased in your Audible Confident collection. girls. Who weave here and there among the stouter and more stable become first sharp, joyous. Now, let's, you can listen on your TV, you can sit back and just chill out. Turn off the display so you won't waste power. Just get to sit down here before the sleep is ready. Off it goes. And then, of course, with this type of thing, you, you get to the end of chapter two and you think, oh, it's bedtime, but oh, I'm so into it. So you turn off the TV from the bedroom and continue the book in the bedroom. Probably with an Alexa or yes, or, Alexa. or another LG speaker. TV or speaker, yeah, yeah. Speaker. yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Also, with just the beta software, yeah. Play rock music. Access Amazon Music. Here's a station for rock music, classic rock on Amazon Music. Good track. Yeah, but that's animal um, music. So, so the, the beauty of this is Australians don't have to choose anymore. The TVs support Google. They support Alexa. They support an Android phone. They support an iOS phone. And aren't you bringing a um, home? Um, home uh, oh, kit. I was going to say yeah, 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 in the second half. Yep. Yeah. Amazon's coming soon, and Apple AirPlay 2 and HomeKit, second half. Okay, we're going to go down the, sec down the other end of the yeah, corridor. There's all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff that I continue to find in this house that I didn't know we even did. That's a portable air purifier. Yeah. <laughs> you know, back to the TVs. Sign beam. So, are well, we bringing this in? Yes, we will be bringing this product in. Um, so this is a short throw projector with all of the functionality of Lovely. the TVs that you've seen today. Do you see that at CES? Yes. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. So fantastic. all of the technology we just showed you in the previous room is available on all our TVs, including this 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 projector here. This Can you unit, just give that light down a minute? Yeah, by, by all means. This pro, uh, yeah. just there's a switch at the door. Uh, this projector is ten off. centimeters away from the wall and is producing a 90 inch screen. If we pull this out another eight centimeters to 18 centimeters, we get 120 inch. So, you, but you can just see that it doesn't intrude into the room. Full Dolby Atmos soundbar incorporated into it, terrestrial antenna, um, web OS, all the smarts that we've, we've seen. And when are we looking at price and wise? So, uh, I, the, the, so to buy something like that today in Australia, you're looking at around twelve thousand dollars. We will launch this significantly cheaper. That's all I can say at this point. Sure. Okay. Well, so in that sense, we're talking of ten grand, nine grand for that one that they showed at CES, yes. which was a which was like an industrial yeah with a big drawer and everything. <laughs> and is this laser? Is it, though? Yeah, Sorry. it's a dual laser. Oh. Um, dual laser, two and a half thousand lumens. You probably no, you need it in the darker room. Right? Okay. No, I mean with the lights well, on. Yeah. I mean if you had a, the, that, yeah. the big yeah. advantage, disadvantage here, you can see here the, on the yeah. wall. Yeah. Um, you know we're just putting on a white wall. If you put on a nice screen, it's one of those one of those silver but, reflective screens too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but you know the, the whole it's, it's the benefit of having the the, the the unit which is just sitting down there rather than having a big black box in, in your lounge room. It's the rollable without being rollable. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get you to turn around for a moment and we're going to look at OLED. So I know we've seen um, some OLEDs already, but I just want to talk about OLED for a moment. So, so you guys already um, tell me that this is the best television. I don't need to tell you. Uh, we've sold uh, between 
2018, we sold 50% more OLEDs than we did the year before. This year, as a company, we expect to sell about 3.5 million OLEDs across the world. Uh, it represents about 20% of our sales. So OLED continues to be very much a growing, a growing category. Um, so we, we've had a couple of hints at Alpha 9 and Alpha 7 technology. The screens, are, we're not seeing the incremental improvements in the screen, so where we're getting the incremental improvements in the picture is from the processing. So this year, these new processors, and I think that does a little bit of injustice, just calling it Generation 2 sounds as if it's like a bit extra. These are significantly more powerful processor. So we're seeing the benefits there from a smart perspective, we're seeing benefits there from the processing of video, and we're seeing benefits from sound. So the, um, the Super UHD TVs that we first saw downstairs today, they are using the Alpha 7 processor. The big difference between last year's processor in those and this year's is they now have the four step upscaling. So the processor is powerful enough, instead of being two step, it's now going to four step. So in that Super UHD technology, you're seeing upscaling similar to what we were seeing in um, OLEDs last year. Uh, so this is still four-step, but still more powerful. We're going to talk about some of the, the benefits there. So um, this, this processor uses um, some technology in the, in the background that we refer to as deep learning. So anyone remember the game Pong? Yeah. Okay. You've got the two paddles and you've got the ball going backwards oh, yeah. and forwards, right? Think of, that, think of that game if you said to a computer, here's a whole bunch of instructions, now you go and work with those instructions and play the game. A lot of my competitors, that's how they're doing artificial intelligence. The way we are working with artificial intelligence is we give them the game, we don't give them the game Pong, but I'm just trying mm -hmm. to give you an analogy. We give them the game Pong and we say to them, okay, you take Pong, take it away and come back and tell me when you worked out how best play it. And over a period of time, it gets better and better and better because it learns from it. So that is how we are using um, this deep learning technology. So why is that important? So let's make it, let's start to make it practical. We use that intelligence to improve on the picture and improve on the sound. We're gonna talk about the practical, as practical aspects in a second, but we're gonna, here, there's a whole lot of pictures. Before we do that, let's just take that question. Yeah, how does a, how does a machine learning AI know what picture looks better than another? Okay, that's how yeah, I'm going to tell you it's a muffin and not a chihuahua. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, what were you doing? Like, when they're developing this, um, we, we don't tell it's a muffin or a chihuahua, we let it work that out itself. So then it instantly knows what it's looking at. Well, we, sure. we don't tell it what good skin tone is, or good colour of sky, or the sea, um, or you know, that McDonald's yellow or the Coca Cola red is very iconic colours. Mm -hmm. It's very important to match that correctly, and they're good anchors to develop uh, the upscaling engine. Um, so all of this is learnt and it learns, it can, we, we fed it millions of data points of you know, news programs, cooking shows, broadcast TV, or fan movies, and it learns, oh, this is high quality, I can see there's less grain or there's no artifacts. And it starts to see, oh, okay, sky should always be this color, this one's wrong. I need to be aware that when I see this, I need to correct it back up to what sky should be. And this is all, actually very intelligent and it's done before we bake it and put it into the product. It's all in development. So once we're at a point where we're very happy with it, we've done our consumer trials, it's then finalized, packaged and put in the 2019 TV. So when you're home and you are watching something that's less than ideal, particularly in Australia, broadcast TV has some compression issues. So you get banding and noise, block noise, mosquito noise, on and on. Alpha 9 intelligent processor will look for I've seen the sky, it should be this color, it will correct it. It looks for noise, I've seen that, it shouldn't be there. And it optimizes the picture so that you get a better result. But did you want me to put that back? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, you can do grace mode. In the other room? No, we didn't. We need to go back and on the way back downstairs, we need to do grace mode. This is an Australian innovation, not yeah. available in other countries. Yeah. Have you got about that too? Is that good? Is that better than the Yes. No, it's cool. Okay, cool. Great. So you know the TV makes mistakes, I don't have mistakes. 
Um, so that's that. Now, another one of my favorite features using artificial intelligence is what we call AI brightness. And AI brightness utilizes a sensor in the TV to detect the ambient lighting conditions. So in a room like that, where the ceiling lights are on, might be the window that's open, reflections on the screen are stopping me from seeing this fine detail. If I dim the lights and my pupils will adjust, we do see that this thing's there, there's a lot of stuff there, and we'd like to see that, but it's not possible in a fully lit room. Now, if, let's assume you guys were jumping on an aircraft, and everyone had the blinds open, what would you do? You'd, you'd get your, on your monitor, you'd turn out the brightness, mm. and what's that going to do? It's going to blow out the whole screen, we'll isn't it? Yeah. So let's keep having, having a think about this. Yep, so while that's rolling, this is a simulation, and then I'll actually show you what we're looking for. So we've got the TV on the left, which would be last year's, TV and the one on the right is this year's, and that little sensor doesn't increase the brightness of the cloud. It only increases the brightness of those low levels of grey, where the detail that would be hidden um, is actually hidden. And we can see that running on here. So we've got this really bright part of the image, and we've got all this detail in the dark part down here. And if I simulate all the lights on with my torch, you can see the TV will automatically brighten up, yeah. move away. <laughs> so we're not oversaturating the bits that we don't want to oversaturate, we're brightening up the darker bits so you get a clear picture. This only works when you have HDR, HDR content, because it, you have to have that metadata to be able to do this. So next year's so model, next year's model will be screen. simulating HDR. This screen, yeah. well, this is a C9, so um, I think you have to check that. It's the, nine. The, the, no, 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 65 inch, it'll be around the 3,000. Oh, sorry. Four, oh. Three, four thousand dollar mark of RRP, so in the stores, three odd thousand dollars, three something. I think it's four, four. Is it RRP? Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, right there. It's in the press release. Yeah, got it here. But give it time and the price always comes down. So the other, one of the other things that this technology will do is, we talked about upscaling before. One of the important things that we've done is we've said, okay, if you have a standard definition image versus a high definition definition image and you want to upscale it to 4K, it's different. Last year we just assumed everything was the same and we applied the same algorithm, algorithms to upscale. This year we've said, okay, we can identify the source quality and therefore make adjustments to the algorithm based on what we're upscaling. So that's another example of what we're using. Do we want to do uh, sound? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so um, from a sound perspective, uh, there's probably two, two key things. The first is that... The learning by genre? Yeah, learning, yep. So the remote that Thomas has in his hand... Oh, do that at the end, it's after. Oh, you do that second? Yeah. Okay. The first one is, okay, how many of you have been in the situation where you, where you can't quite hear the audio? Like, the, the background noise is, is louder than the, the voice, and you go, I just can't quite hear that. This is when my mother says, turn on the subtitles. Okay, so <laughs> essentially, this, by using this artificial intelligence that we've developed, you look at what is the main source from sound? Is it an explosion? Is it someone's talking? Mm -hmm. And then it has essentially a dynamic equaliser or controlling a dynamic equaliser in the background to ensure that if it's voice, if it's my voice, it's bringing that up versus the background noise. If an explosion, it brings the explosion up. So it's a very clever way and that'll work on all the Super UHD and, and OLED TVs. Uh, it's a very clever way of improving that sound on there and to hear a demonstration of that is quite cool. Uh, the other thing that you want to do, the so this is this is a, uh, also a demonstration of simulating. This is the magic one. Oh yeah. So the other one is is. Assuming we didn't have this soundbar here, 
the sound on these TVs just get better and better in their own right. Thomas could be sitting here on the lounge and through the settings menu actually tune the sound to where people sit in the room. So for example Using a microphone on the remote. Using the microphone on the remote. So oh, here the you can see ear level where's the idea you would press it? play. Dolby Atmos coming out of the two speakers. So there are some trickery. Out of the TV speakers themselves. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that, that exact thing in a moment. Um, but, so the last thing I want to talk about before we talk about more sound is um, this year our OLEDs are going to support FreeSync. So those of you that are familiar with FreeSync, um, this is where if you're a gamer, you can reduce the amount of tearing that occurs on the screen. In those fast action games. Correct. Yeah. That's uh, where you find it, instant game response. I can't click on it because I'm not connected to a console, but uh, it, it, this will tell you straight away, this is an HDMI 2.1 product, it supports variable refresh rate, known as FreeSync, and connect to an Xbox One X or S, and it'll automatically enable VRR or um, instant game response, and also when it switches between the menus and the game and different apps on the console, it'll enable um, auto low latency mode, so it'll switch game mode on and off when necessary. So yeah. you just keep it on there, basically. If yeah. any of you are gamers, that's meant to hell a lot to you. If you're not gamers like me, it's a bit of gobbledygook, but yeah. it essentially means faster reaction time and better picture when there's multiple gamers, is the, is the translation of that. So it can do um, up to 120 frames per second at 4K. Okay, so we, we started the day listening to some soundbars downstairs, and before we move um, out of this room, I just want to sort of finish off by putting that whole solution together. So keep in mind, we talked about um, downstairs having a sound, an Adobe Atmos soundbar that you could have for, say, um, less than a thousand dollars. At the back of the room here we have some rare speakers so for that you need essentially um, a black receiving box which takes the Wi-Fi from the front of the room and two speakers that are wired to that and essentially one of these Dolby Atmos soundbars and let's just take a listen to that for a moment. David you might want to stand in the middle if you want to get the full effect. Sounded pretty good, didn't it? Mm. So this is this to me is really cool because I mean this is a 65 inch OLED, but we, we were selling OLEDs for around 55 inches around two thousand dollars. That new soundbar we, we talked about downstairs around a thousand dollars. Those speakers at the back there, I think 150 200 dollars somewhere around there. So for just over three thousand dollars, you could essentially duplicate what you just heard. This is very easy to set up. You plug this into a PowerPoint, you connect it to your TV, you plug that into the PowerPoint, you press a button to book the two up, and all of a sudden you're duplicating that sound without running wires, without really super expensive hi-fi gear. Yes, you can do better, and indeed we could put a, our best soundbar here, we can have our best TV here, but it, it makes this experience affordable and attainable by the everyday Australian. Now, where did you hear the sounds come from? All around, yeah. 
you heard them come from all around the room. This is the other really cool thing about this. So this is our SL9 soundbar. So you'll notice the soundbar is mounted vertically. This is the one we announced at um, CES. So all those other soundbars we saw downstairs. Have What's to the be... price on that soundbar? This one? Uh, I think it's, it's a nice one. Oh, it's 1,400. Yeah. But you're saying the other soundbars have to sit flat on the... Correct. So this one can go either way. Yeah. Now, it's got a gyroscope inside. So when it's horizontal, the sound we just heard would come out forward-facing speakers and upward-facing firing speakers. Because it's vertical, it knows that it has to reproduce that effect with downward-facing speakers and front-facing speakers. So you heard sounds from above you. So normally we would do that by using these upward-firing speakers bouncing off the roof and coming down to you. We've made you think the noise was coming from above you by bouncing the sound off the, off the ground and up in the air. So it's amazing technology that is enhancing people's enjoyment of, of watching movies with this sort of encoding in it. Pretty cool. All right, we're gonna head back to, the, uh, to that room we just came from because I am amiss of not telling you about the new uh, Grace Note technology that we've incorporating into our TV. Grace Note is an AC Nielsen company and they essentially get all the programming, accurate programming information from the TV stations. Last year we showed you off um, using the metadata that is transmitted terrestrially um, and what you can do with that information, i.e. You know, find you know when is this pro? You know, ask the television when is you know married at first sight on and so forth. What we're able to do now is get very rich content. The first thing you'll see is a moment ago we saw the Seven Flicks logo. You're only getting that because we've essentially got an internet connection now and we're pulling that data separately. So here we go. So you got Racing.com. You wouldn't have seen that before. You just would have seen channel numbers. We've got to have. Um, your Money Live logo coming up somewhere, TVSN. So we're enriching the content available. So we recommend something to watch. In, in particular, we can get um, very detailed information on particular programs. And of course, the more, more popular a program it is, the more information we're going to have around directors, actors, all that sort of stuff. So all these uh, thumbnails are all produced by uh, Grace Notes database. Uh, using the metadata supplied by the end uh, feed. So it is a lot of uh, work going into it, but you do get a more enriched experience that you would only really get on a Fox tool or maybe a subscription type set of box. So from the metadata, it's pulling the images off the internet. Right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah, I do understand. You do. <laughs> <laughs> and presumably those images don't, like you've got a license to use them, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, so we, we essentially are buying that information and providing it to Australian yeah. consumers as part of the television. Of this show. Okay, so it knows what show you're watching. So it's, I said, who's the director of this show? And it said, you're watching it on, um, you're watching Seinfeld. Did a search for Seinfeld automatically. And then it said, you can also watch Seinfeld on Stan. Well, so that's, that's a Google thing, though, right? Uh, that's, I that's, click on that that's, I'm sure that's Google. Click it, yeah. Might take you to the app. But the information on who the director was would have been there somewhere. But yeah, look at that. Took me into the app. Um, is the little menu working at the moment, or is that? Well, it's supposed to. Was that would be something more modern? Who is the director of this show? Mm. No. Ah, uh, it's it's really cool. Uh, Try a different. Who are the actors in this show? Again, for the people that are watching this video, this is beta software. It's not the final release version. It's not actually. <laughs> is this the LG AI wow. as opposed to? So what we're doing here is we're connecting to a beta server back in Korea, which is why you're seeing things happening so slowly. So even though we're accessing what it is it, what looks like Australian content, we're going, this won't be the experience that you'll have. So what Thomas is trying to get is a little, instead of having this full browser, 
essentially have a small browser that pops up here whilst you're seeing the, the main picture, a small browser that pops up here with the, the really detailed information on the show. Yeah, and I also got a feature called Magic Link. So it says, oh, you like Seinfeld, do you? Well, how would you like to watch all these other TV shows that are related to Seinfeld or yeah. similar type genre? Um, or if you'd like, these are also available on YouTube anytime you want. So it is just enriching the customer's access to content and it works on practically every show. The only one didn't work was in Turkish and uh, I wasn't sure what it was recommending anyway. It's not far off the what Netflix are doing. Yeah. You know what we I mean, should... that Netflix AI engine is very smart. Yeah, that's true. You know what we should do tomorrow is put this de that's demo nice. on one of the other televisions, the one of the Australian one of the TV is ready to go rather than using this software on this one. Okay, we're going to go downstairs to our last room. So, uh, this is one of two 8K TVs that we'll see in Australia later on this year. Uh, so this is a 75 inch LED based TV, so 33 million pixels. Um, both of the televisions when launched will come with um, HDMI 2.1. What that means is the HDMI cable is capable of carrying 45 48 gigabits per second. So 60 frames. So the importance of that, it means it will it has enough highway lanes to carry all the information that you would need for an 8K picture. So we have an 8K television, we have an, a cable capable of carrying 8K images, we do not have an 8K player, and we do not have 8K content yet. So but it's the, upscaling. So the Olympic, yeah. So the Olympics next year, or the, is it this year? No, what is it? 2020. 2020. Next okay. year, they're going to broadcast in 8K. If we can find an 80 megabit link that's stable enough, we'll be able to show like, uh, the Olympics. Don't forget, you can do bonding of multiple wide and wireless connections together. We'll look at that next year. Uh, um, <laughs> now, we, we've been talking about upscaling all day. The Alpha 9 processor is a lot more powerful than we're seeing in those TVs upstairs, to the point where when we're talking about 8K TV, we can upscale six times. So do six step upscaling. We don't need to do six, six step with a 4K because we, we don't have, that, that we don't, we're not trying to get, to get to such a high level. Now with that, we're gonna actually spend some more time around the corner because this is really where the action is. Dave's admiring the beauty products. Oh, he's going to put the mask on for us. So, LG fan, if no one's ever seen one before, with a mosquito deterrent in it. Uh, <laughs> LG, that's what I mean. I L one of LG cosmetic problems and uh, products and masks on the table. Uh, okay. okay, this is selling the show, right? Uh, I mean, this would walk out. You're probably wrong. <laughs> yeah, I can yeah, say kind of. Like uh, it, it mimics the that. noise of a female like a mosquito to deter mosquitoes. Or, just go from there. Could you have them outside? Like on a desk? Yeah, you could. Just, just, it repels them around a certain area. Yeah. 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 It's also a connected product. So this is a smart device that you can connect to your mobile phone, to the television. So you can turn the fan on from your TV. As I said, everything in this house is connected. Does this mean okay. I can ask Alexa to kill all the mosquitoes? In the well, <laughs> you would deploy you can the nanobots. You can't ask Alexa yet, but you can certainly ask Google to, oh, to, yeah, to turn the fan on. Okay, so yeah. if we believe if an Australian is going to get an 8K TV, they are going to want the best TV. The best TV, without question, is a big TV that has the best picture. OLED has the best picture. This is an 88 inch OLED 8K TV. You're only going to see the benefit of 8K with this television standing this close. You guys standing back there are not going to see the benefits. So you need a big TV and you want the best picture quality that you can get. So this product will be coming from LG and will be coming from us later on in the year. So we started today and we talked about um, people's passion points. We talked about sport, we talked about games, we talked about movies. So, and we also talked about bigger. So this is an example of the biggest television that we have in this particular house. We talked about um, better, so we talked about the improvements that processors can bring um, to the picture. We've talked about smarter, so we've talked about what a 
faster processor can do to help that picture. We talked about how the new enhancements to the, um, the WebOS, as far as making it easier to get to the content that people are interested in. But I actually want to turn this back on you guys for a moment and ask you, what are you, what, what are you guys walking away from the event today feeling? What, what, what impressed you today, Alex? Uh, well, I mean, no, I mean, everything. <laughs> I think that uh, laser 4K unit is uh, something cool. It's a shame we didn't have the rollable TV here in Australia, but I'm sure that's in high demand. We will, but, be bringing, um, we will have a rollable TV here yeah, at some yeah. point, and I assure you we will bring you around to have sure. a look at and it. And I wouldn't have mind seeing the phone with the, with the two screens. But look, I mean, every time there's new technology, you're, you're either bringing the latest at you know, a high price point, justify the high price points, or you're bringing things that were in last year's top-end models down to... Um, you know, mid-range and lower-end models, and that's that's the way technology works. Why do you think there's a problem with mainstream retailers not selling premium, like your signature series? Look, I think there. I think that there's definitely retailers that are selling premium products, and we've seen that for many years. I mean, David, you know that the audio files go to specialist high file. Um, you, if you want a premium kitchen, you go to a premium kitchen shop. I think. Rather than look at it, why aren't the main reseller, retailers selling the premium product? I think we need more premium retailers selling premium product. If you're going to spend, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars on the best TV, you want someone who can sell that TV to you, can install that TV for you, and do all those sorts of things. So I think a product like this, you really want to go to a specialist retailer. If you're talking about a you signature range that, of products, just open the wrong store. Yeah. About five months ago, yeah. they've had spectacular success with it, mm -hmm. right? Do you think, you know, for, for products like this, I mean, you've got probably seven or eight signature products. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's time to open your own store? I, I think there would potentially be a time. Either we would open it or we would open a premium store within another retailer's like store. Like Bingley did with Sony. Yeah, or with Miele. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I, there's various ways of looking at it. Um, James, yeah, my, your, your like thoughts today? Easily the... Um, the the uh, the idea of the um, the TV, the sound bar, uh, and the surround for yeah. a price point that you know most yeah, Australians yeah. would be able to, uh, yeah. and that's to afford. It, that's the quality easy to set of up. what you get for the price point you get yeah. is hands down the, the best yeah. thing you've shown today. I, mean. I agree with that. You agree. I, I think. Yeah. I mean that that is great technology, but it's very small and limited. That's mass market, major appeal to people, mm. and affordable. Yeah, but is the Dolby Atmos um, only on 4K uh, Blu-ray discs, or is it on uh, streaming services? Okay, so Dolby Atmos, you're getting Dolby, old Dolby Atmos, <laughs> Dolby Atmos off Netflix. Yep. You get 4K discs. You're getting it off, as we talked about. You'll, you will. No, you won't get it off Apple to begin with. Um, and Stan is keeps talking about bringing Dolby Atmos. Well, but I mean, the, there's, there's content out there. There's, there's content yeah. out, and it's only going to increase. Yeah. Uh, a very good question would be, and I don't know the answer to this, is Foxtel's 4K channel got Dolby Atmos yet? I don't think so. No, but, no, but, no, but we're seeing all these things change, mm -hmm. right? We're seeing, you know, two years ago, we didn't have any 4K. Now we've got a pay TV provider providing. We've got streaming guys providing it, you can still go to a store and, and, and purchase it. There's 99 4K titles on Netflix, 500 on HD Blu-ray, yeah. uh, and then Amazon has 21. Look, and I think, um, I think you will see TV stations start to, in their own right, mm. start to, to stream much Hot higher content. Very yeah. Hot Hot We've already seen, um, seen the seen the TV stations significantly increase the quality of what they're streaming. So I think it will it will come. Because the reality is, is where, we're, where we're getting this from is changing mm. and all, all the media players need to adapt. And look, people, people are demanding this sort of stuff, right? We'd all love that. <coughs> but we talked about what we saw um, upstairs around having OLED technology that's affordable, having Dolby Atmos technology that's affordable. So the customers are demanding it more and more. And 
presumably the existing content you're, you're listening to that isn't Dolby Atmos will sound better on that uh, No, and we you saw anyway. the yeah. demo where it was taking 2.1 mm. sound and changing it to 5.1, and a significant difference between the two. And, and that's what the increased processes and all that AI technology ultimately is doing, is trying to give everybody the best viewing and sound experience <coughs> they possibly can. So that's the power of all that technology. So I certainly um, thank you all for giving up your time this evening. I realise it's after five o'clock and your, your time is very precious and we always appreciate you coming and uh, having a look at the LG products. We certainly encourage you to stay, have a drink, have something else to eat. Um, as I said, there's lots of rooms and lots of products in these rooms that we haven't had an opportunity to talk about today. The good news is, is, is it's an air purifier. It's like a Dalek. And it's worrying me because it's gone yellow. See the colour around the outside here? So this colour indicates the pollution in the air. So if it's green, it's good. If it's yellow, I don't know what's been happening up the front of this room. It went red upstairs, one of them went red, and it was cops, like it was like an emergency. Yeah, yeah. And so that actually indicates, so uh, I was talking to a uh, one of my Korean colleagues yesterday, he just said he just bought five of those, one for each room in his apartment for Seoul, because they're getting all the dust coming across from China. So we're very lucky we live in a country where we don't tend to need a lot of these, but it is a growing category. Yeah, yeah. So the retailers are interested in buying these from us because they are starting to sell them from some of the So what products. it does is exterminates pollution, Correct. given that it looks a bit like a Dalek. Yeah. Yeah. Just going back to this, this yeah. technology and this stuff, I mean, have you shown this to retailers? I don't. I only found out it was here after I'd done two or three of these tours. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if the retailers okay. even even found out about it. I, I think that's fantastic. It, I, 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 I like it. Like it. It's, it's got a light in it. It's got the fan. Yeah. Have you got mosquitoes in it, Charlie? You're going to demonstrate that. Yeah. Sure, sorry, it's a demo unit anyway. So I mean, I'm assuming, but yeah. So we've got. Um, Every Australian home needs one. one more of these to do tonight. <laughs> Okay, thank you. That was anything that, that anyone had any questions about or wanted to have a look at? Any, any appliances that people were particularly interested in? We've got fridges, we've got washing machines, we've got stylers, so we've got dishwashers. So just tell us about the on-sale dates for the things we saw today, just roughly. Okay, so uh, the, all of the, um, all the OLED, UHD and Super UHD, Super UHD TVs we will see within the next two months. So the first ones will start going to stores in two weeks. So you will have details in the press kits on the actual dates and the prices. Products like this one, will, you'll see there is no price listed yet. So the 8K OLEDs will and the 8K LED products, they won't be released until later on in the year and closer to the launch, we'll actually tell you when they're gonna launch. I could, we could tell you a date now, but 100% it'll change, and the, we'll, we'll announce the price closer. Soundbar is available now. Um, look at the wine cellar. It's coming. Yeah. Oh, the wine fridge, is that coming? Oh, yeah, so the wine fridge is coming, so the signature product, oh, the um, which we saw in the other room. So we'll see that towards okay. uh, Christmas. Any idea what the cost of that's going to be? Well, uh, no, but to give you a point of comparison, the... Um, the existing fridge is a ten thousand dollar fridge. So if I look, I, I really don't know what price it's going to be, but I would expect it's going to be probably at half the price of the other one. Okay. To put a to, to take a guess, maybe maybe more, but I would expect it, it's it's it's. You know, if, if you look at the, what the price of other wine fridges are in Australia, it's it's probably going to fall somewhere around that. And the one everyone else knows, is the beer maker. The beer maker. Right, well, I'd like one of the beer makers. <laughs> I want to be the chief product tester after brewing for 30 years at home myself. Um, so the beer maker is, we, we're still waiting on confirmation from the retailers as to where they're going to actually take that product. Um, the price that is being rumoured around that, I believe, is a bit high, and I think a few retailers are shying away from that because of the price. Also... You announced earlier this year that <clears throat> the world's thinnest 17-inch laptop. Yep. Are you bringing laptops? Are you selling laptops in Australia? Okay, so that laptop's actually upstairs. Yep. Um, and it's you pick it up and you think, how is this a laptop this size, mm. this long? Like this one. 
so light. Yeah, well, that's that is one of the grand. Pass, pass that around. That's a fifteen inch. So, are, are you selling them at the moment? Uh, so, we, so at this point, LG won't be bringing those in, but we do continuously look. For example, these products sitting here on this table, and you think, what is this? So, these are beauty products, um, and very, very popular in the Asian markets. We've that? had multiple. So it turns you into a cyber we've, we've had multiple LEDs. visits from. Um, from the, like the Korean tank. teams looking yeah. at whether there is a market for products like this in Australia. Sorry, what does it do? What she said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that one, I can remember, it fires lights at your skin. This one lifts. What's the one that. No, that one moisturises your skin. And sorry, why is it firing lights at your skin? This one lifts your skin, so if you're getting saggy skin, like you and I, David, lifts, you know. This one cleanses your skin. It's like a, a, a spinning brush. Spinning brush. Yeah. But that lightning, does that firm your skin? What does it do? Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah. It's a improved elasticity and tonality. And We're going to tell Stephen Fennick that's the latest Star Wars. There's a men's uh, one um, mask. <laughs> mask and get him to put it on. Yeah. I think he's coming tonight. Wish I knew what you said. Must be oh, look at the difference already, <laughs> David. It must be um, interesting how they're doing that. Can I ask a um, question cool. between what, what in the... Um, What's in the new televisions, the new offerings that you think is going to compel people to upgrade? Uh, so look, the, the people who are going to be upgrading haven't upgraded their televisions for probably years. four or five years. Yeah. So the first thing I would say that everything about a television compared to that long ago is compelling. If you were to say why would someone pick an LG television over a, com a competing product, um, I think I think there's a, there's a few things. I think there's the simplicity of using the TV. Like if you've got to buy a car, do you test drive, drive it? The thing that amazes me is how many people test drive the remote of their television. Right? So you've seen how easy it is. We talked about how people are using televisions differently now. So uh, a big advantage we have is that WebOS, the magic, everything from the magic remote to the ribbons to, to that. So I think from customers looking at our product when you compare that to our competitors, I think that's a that's a big um, a big advantage. Without question, if people can afford it, the OLED te technology is just spectacular. Um, it is it is just better. Um, the um, the LED technology stands up against the competition, um, but it has you know that image processing stuff that adaptive. Um, in, I, know, I keep thinking adaptive infrastructure, but that's from another uh, that's from another world. Uh, artificial past intelligence, life. yeah, past life. Um, so you, you, you've, you've got that technology, but people don't care about that stuff. What they care about is does the picture look better and does it sound better, which is why when I, when I talk, I don't like really getting too much into technology. Like, what's the customer benefit here? Like, I can hear people talk better. Um, the picture looks better you know, that demo that, that um, Thomas did with his torch on his phone, you can really see the difference that makes. And, you know, when we're looking at that kettle downstairs, the, the teapot, like you saw the definition on that OLED, you could see that the bottom of the kettle. You, you, you think about what you're missing out when you actually see that. But I think, you know, go back to what David was saying before with retail, is one of the, the biggest challenges we have is you've just spent an hour with me and we've talked about the TVs. I get, I, someone walks into a store, they're lucky if they get 10 minutes with a salesperson, and at that time they may have gone through three brands. And I've said everything on super bright dynamic, which yeah. is not what they're gonna have at home. No, exactly right, I mean you get, I mean we, we were in a Harvey Norman store yesterday, and one of, there was three OLEDs lined up, and one of them was brighter than the other two, because two of them had been set in normal mode, home mode, and one had been set in store mode. Store mode makes, all the colours over bright, and people go, "Oh, I like the bright shiny one." It's, the, you know, the, I think one of the important things in our business, and which is why we spend so much time with you guys in small groups, is you you look at the things, and then you can say, "Well, this is," you know, you guys all talk about OLED being great, 
So that's the biggest sales tool that we have at the end of the day is, is people who research and most people make decisions before they've walked in the, in the door. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the referrals from friends. Um, okay. Okay. Also right. knowing, having the consumers know to ask to see the TVs in the different modes. Yeah. Have them be more educated when they go in the store. I mean, my, my advice to anyone buying a TV is watch a free-to-air TV. Yeah. Because you you walk into a store, you see the... Animation. Like we make our TVs look the best we possibly can, and there's a reason we do that. Put it on a free-to-air TV, and what does it look like? The thing that amazes me, and like, let's take your money live, standard definition. You're fortunate, you look more flattering under standard yeah, definition right. than you that's would on an 8K, and we talked about this before. But if you watch the, yourself on an OLED in standard definition versus a UHD television, it's chalk and cheese. You look so much better. And that that was, when I joined, first joined LG three and a half years ago, within the first month I did that, I put a TV signal into LED and OLED, and I looked at the two pictures, standard definition, and I said, I've got to buy one of these OLED televisions. Because even though they were both 4K TVs and they were both better than what the TV stations were transmitting, you look at the two pictures and you go, wow, that's why you buy it. So yeah. we'd probably be better off showing the pictures in SD of the TV stores. However, I don't think Jerry Harvey would be very happy about that. On the Telstra TV, Sky News is um, 1080p. Is the yeah, your I'm money on, channel as well? So your money on Foxtel, the Foxtel platform is, is HD. It's yeah. just on the free to wear channel is, uh, is SD. Yeah, yeah. See, I mean, if you look at what's happening, if you look at the droids research, 65% of people researching prior to walking into a store. Yeah. Why? Well, Tony, what, what's the why percentage? Why is the new model? Why is the new model? You research, you walk into an LG store, and you order it online. People, so the model people, is, you're not carrying stuff on the floor. Yeah. People still, Australians, you know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. What's the percentage oh, of people who make the decision on the TV before they walk in? Oh, before they walk into a store. Well, they, they tend to walk into a store with two or three brands yeah. in their mind. They say, Geroids are saying 65% research prior, oh. they walk in predisposed to two or three brands. Okay. It's, it's all kind of the threes. They, they tend to go to three stores, yeah. you know, the, the JB, Good Guys and Harvey's, and then they go to three retailer sites, and then they have three brands in their mind, and then they basically get refined. But the brands. interesting part that hasn't moved in three years is the part where in the Deloitte's research, mm -hmm. where 31 to 35 percent research inside the store, it's got nothing to do with price. It's to do. Oh. I, well, oh, I'll give you an example. I people wouldn't... walking in, people walking in to buy a microwave. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, the research shows they've got a hole in the wall at home mm -hmm. where there's an existing microwave. Mm -hmm. When do you last see height, depth, width? Does that fit in my hole? Yeah. Back at home. I've just had to do that. Uh, that, that might be true, yep. of recent, but what I've seen in the past is that they go through that process of looking and finding the right brand and, and the right model. They do their research, you know, mm. do I want an owner, do I want an LED? And then when they're in the store, they price check on yep. Google there. It's more yep. from what I've seen. There is price checking, but one of the things that's coming through is retailers are not really taking notice of a lack of information. That even, I mean, the other day I walked into a store, I knew the product inside out. Two salespeople did not have a clue about the product. Not a clue. Yeah. But isn't that the retail's perennial, you know, problem? They yeah. the staff yeah. don't. It's 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 the majority of floor staff's problem or yeah. retailers' problem that they take them the path of least resistance. Yeah. Australians still want to go to touch, touch, feel, and look at a product. Yeah, and, and, and they still we're not comfortable ordering product. something without seeing it. Yeah. A big purchase. Now, nineteen-year-old is ordering. My daughter will order. <laughs> Six dresses and return five of them off the internet. Yeah, side unseen. Although, although Amazon now starts to, to block those people yeah. and uh, bar them from the service because they're costing too much in yeah. return. But the, 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 they're yeah. used to this, you know, always it's on instant problem. gratification society. Uh, as I always say, for the young people, instant gratification isn't it, instant it enough. It will change, but today <laughs> Australians still want to touch feel yeah. and look at the product first. Okay. Well, thank you very much.